Hey, 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 welcome everyone. This is Drippy Do Heart. And on this channel, which is Drippy Worse, we talk about some of the most exciting setups in the market, uh, you know, with respect to options trading. And we look at the options flow, technical analysis, pattern analysis, and, you know, macroeconomic events, market structure. And we combine all this information to find uh, some of the best setups among you know 4,000 stocks in the market uh, roughly and uh, Keep in mind. I'm not a financial advisor. You're responsible for taking you know your risk and your profits and everything uh, Whatever I discuss on this channel is mostly for learning and uh, understanding you know the process behind this and hopefully you guys can identify these setups in the future. So real quick, um, I'm, I'm gonna quickly go over some of the setups I'm watching and uh, then we are gonna talk about some mega caps you should be watching this week. A lot of economic events, earnings week is starting soon. So let's talk about that first. Is uh, we have uh, CPI data coming Wednesday that's basically going to decide where the market is heading towards. Um, yes, if you see here, it's starting to stall again at these levels here. We got rejected and we plunged. Uh, this was back in 28 June, and now we are starting to struggle around these levels. So if we break below 38.66 on ES, and if we see this, you know, this massive red candle, something like that, we could all the way go back to 3800.38.11. And then from there, I think we could potentially see another leg down in the market. But either way, not bullish until we break above 4,000 on SPY. Until then, we still have to, we cannot really swing calls in this market, you know, for SPY. We can swing calls for other equities, but until then, 4,000 is the level I'm watching. Above 400, things can get interesting. But so far, I do think that even if we get, a, let's say, a little bit of rally here, we could see a pullback back down again because um, I think we haven't had the bottom yet. And this was just a short squeeze, a small one. A bigger one will come later. But we'll see what happens. Um, nothing, this is not a prediction. This is more like an anticipation of what could happen. We are starting to kind of like, you know, hope unable to break above these levels here from last couple days on ES. ES is down currently. Let's talk about, um, so CPI data comes on Wednesday. So maybe Tuesday we see uh, just like this, a sell off, right? You know, Tuesday or we Tuesday start to see rally. You know, if the data is leaked, last time uh, the data was leaked and that's why we saw the sell off. This opposite could happen. So Tuesday is a critical day after you know, like, uh, you know, might have choppy day in the beginning and then in the end we see something. And Monday, of course, we could see some rally if 3600, it's 3860 holds, uh, we could see some rally. Uh, or if you break above 3900 to 3950, maybe 3975, but we'll see what happens. So, uh, you know, another thing to keep in mind is that Bitcoin right now is not looking good. Bitcoin broke, uh, it was kind of like uh, trending up, but you know, there is still the day is young, buyers can step in. We are still holding this kind of support trend line. So uh, if, if we hold this 20,500 or 20,000, we still have chance for buyers to come up and reclaim. But I personally don't think we'll, we'll see 23,000 break uh, until we see another leg down. This is just part of the bottoming process. We have seen something like this here as well very similar you know this is how flags form go to the weekly chart we are so uh, you know like extended to the downside so this is just part of the basing and consolidation so you know we could base around like this and then finally another leg down and then we go up um, this is multi weeks multi month of breakdown so it's going to be a while until bitcoin you know starts to actually create new highs uh, we could see temporary rallies here and there, but overall, uh, still bearish trend. And uh, we got rejected on the daily here on the 9 and 21. So again, you know, be careful with the Bitcoin. Uh, it's not the time to, 
buy the dip yet in my opinion so these are some of the things to note um, and the crude oil let's talk about that now crude oil is starting to show some kind of uh, you know like holding this on the four hour but we are still on this wedge pattern so unless we break a break out of this wedge you know we break out of this clean clean break out of this wedge and reclaim the 111 this still remains in a downtrend here um, it's still downtrending you know so we still need to break above this um, and then we'll see what happens with crude oil until then um, proceed with caution with the crude oil names uh, I was hoping that oxy will rip on uh, Friday it didn't happen and uh, uh, given that we had the uh, payroll data come came out but you know sometimes things uh, take some time in the market so either way we are watching crude oil and uh, what else Dixie uh, now Dixie is holding 106 it's kind of bad news for spy even after all this uh, you know Dixie is holding well so Dixie can make another high if it's if it breaks below 107 105 around this area then we can see there was a false breakout comes back down but it's kind of consolidating here right now and then the next one is VIX the important one for the upcoming week we have OPEX uh, on 15th so that's another thing to so there's a lot going on this week um, we did break the trend line on VIX here but we are approaching this support area do we double bottom here and reverse do we go back all the way here to 21 and then start to f see like something like higher high you know always something like this and we go lower and then bounce find a support and then continue next leg up so wix is something i'm watching uh, maybe we'll see it run after opex week so either way interesting week from a lot of perspective a uh, lot of uh, macroeconomic events uh, probably fed speakers will speak as well and we have um, another thing going on with twitter so let's talk about twitter now twitter um, is basically elon musk just uh, absolutely uh, bailed on them and things can get nasty for twitter it can go all the way below thirty dollars um, if unless someone steps in and they tell that we are bidding for Twitter right so um, we, we basically broke this trend so Twitter is something which you know like the IV will be high tomorrow so we'll see what happens but overall yeah I mean it's not a good news for Twitter and uh, so apart from these macroeconomic events some of the setups I'm watching with decent risk reward let's talk about them real quick so General Motors now with the Tesla earnings coming soon and Tesla ripping, I think GM is in a good spot here to kind of start to see um, a rally on it, this name as well. So we found a double bottom on GM here at $30 psychological level. And right now, if you look here, this $32 level here acts as a uh, you know, loading zone, the bounce zone, 32 bounced, 32 bounced and uh, you know, or 32 rejected. So now it came above, it gapped up on 7th of July, it gapped up and now it's to see whether 32 holds or not. If 31.9 starts to break, we could fill this gap 31.5 and then come back up. But either way, it's a really good risk reward because you can cut below 32 and then reevaluate. You know, if it starts to hold 31.5, you can add there. But um, either way it's a good risk reward because if you look at this volume profile on GM uh, four hour volume profile or daily volume profile you can see there is not this thin volume here you know let me move this here this is risk reward yeah it's a thin volume here so we can move really fast in the zone on GM if the market cooperates or Tesla runs GM can also run uh, unless we could see it going all the way till thirty dollars so either way it's a decent setup because this risk is low and if it breaks below 30 you can invalidate uh, 32 invalidate the setup or uh, you can buy some puts short term either way i like the setup a lot um, the risk reward is really good and uh, 32 seems to be the level where gm 
uh, buyer step in maybe it's a it's a buyer and every time you can see here 32 is followed by some decent volume as well you know there's some volume here there's some buyers came out here again around here you can see some buyers here so it's definitely uh, something to look forward to this is also the play of the week for me uh, GM because it's just risk reward is really good on this one I'll talk about some of the mega caps I'm watching which are really bullish but this is purely because the risk reward is good I added this as my top of the play uh, so we are looking at 35 call for GM so there are two ways to play it um, either it breaks above let's say 33 and then you play 35 call you know wait for confirmation or you can start adding and accumulating uh, as long as it holds $32 and then if it breaks below 32 then you can you know sell it and you can even sell puts here you know you don't have to buy calls you can play the uh, selling game and you can sell puts and uh, you can sell $30 puts $32 puts as long as hold 32 you will be profitable so many ways to trade this and uh, I like the risk reward because I mean look at this it's almost seven to one risk reward just with the shares so with options that's like more than that so ten to one probably uh, either way uh, let's move on to the next one is uh, MCD McDonald's now McDonald's is stalling around this area it broke above uh, this key level 252 but then it's starting get start to get rejection here so it looks like McDonald's come it's this rising wedge as well and uh, if you don't notice and go to the weekly chart for McDonald's here um, you can see that uh, this is a clear supply zone on McDonald's I mean for McDonald's for for a long long time for a long time this has been acted as a supply area right here so we are back in the supply so if it fails again in this supply area then you know we can play the short term puts here we can wait for the break of let's say 252.25 around that area or 252 level and we can play the downside break of the falling wedge so it's something I'm watching keeping an eye on we could test 255 and then fall uh, depends on the market so uh, there's RSI divergence as well uh, you can see here we have a basically a higher high here on the price but the RSI shows that the RSI is lower high so is something again a bearish sign um, we still have to watch for Pepsi earnings which is upcoming week we have Pepsi's earning on Tuesday is similar sector so that could be the reason we could see sell off on this one earnings anticipation or bad earnings by Pepsi or anything like that either way we are watching this if it breaks above let's say 255 oh yeah things can get really interesting for McDonald's we could see 260 really fast so either way I think this is a good setup um, looking bearish right now but let's let's see what happens here it's starting to look um, bearish here so let let it let it play out let things turn you know let the EMAs flip on a lower time frame to you know like this and then we play the short um, right now it's just something I'm watching it's a decent risk reward though because uh, let's say you enter on the sh on McDonald's at short let's say 255 um, you know you, there's a gap here right here which can be filled here at 245 uh, 240 level uh, 245 250 to 245 to 242 level so uh, watching that gap to be filled if we break if we cannot break above uh, 255 and cannot hold that level so McDonald's something I'm watching and then the next one on my weekly watch list I want to talk about is KHC now KHC again massive pennant here on the daily chart look at this massive pennant you know and the whole sector seems to be in this range here I think it's waiting for the um what do you call yeah so i mean you can see here it's just sector is in range as well so i think it's waiting for the cpi data to come out to see where it goes um but yeah uh it could break down something like that can happen on khc 
we had that massive sell off could see something like that i'm keeping an open mind you can uh, trade a straddle here just don't get weekly maybe two weeks out three weeks out get a straddle you can play that or wait for the breakout that's better actually wait waiting for the breakout with some volume coming in right now it's just um, it does look like a little bit of distribution going on with these big sell volumes here and lower green days so we could see it sell off but uh, so far it's holding this EMA so we still need to wait uh, for confirmation but I like the setup uh, either way up or down so this is the third one I'm watching and then the fourth one is a little bit bullish setup is plug so plug um, actually broke out of this consolidation zone uh, you know uh, unlike other names um, plug actually broke above this level so it's looking stronger than a lot of other names and plug if if you have traded this before this has a lot of momentum it can go um, it can go up again you know all the way to 21.5 tomorrow so it's it's something not for a swing play because it's extended but more like a day trade maybe if it breaks above if it fails we could also play puts you know if it fails below uh, 18.4 we could play the puts too depending on the market but overall i think plug looks a little bit more bullish and by the way gm flow had some decent flow here for gm small orders but still 32.5 call uh, there are some um, some bigger orders which are uh, you know 55 call 40 call for 250 days so these are some bigger orders um, you know 40 call 100 and 100k again 16th of march 2023 so big orders on gm as well um, not too expensive as well not too shabby for um, for something that's just uh, you know so far uh, out expiration 2.3 you know 230 dollars so you could swing it as well and cut it you know uh, maybe two five percent stop loss something like that uh, but i'm looking for more short term play here and then the next one is plug now for plug you can see they're buying this 21 call here they bought this 21 call right around close when plug was 19.75 and they paid a premium price of 0.37 so premium is roughly around this right now so it hasn't really moved so it's a repeated chain activity volume above open interest here so overall plug looks decent as well so plug is also part of my uh, you know setup for the week um, second setup I'm watching so GM plug and what else I mean uh, GM plug McDonald's and KHC so these four are the ones I'm watching for small caps and you know something which are cheaper premiums a lot of people can afford them so now let's move on to the big guys here let's talk about Tesla now everyone knows Tesla oh my uh, just like you know look at this daily squeeze uh, four hour momentum turned positive here on uh, Tesla uh, four hour looking really good with this breakout with the news of Twitter now we could see some more I mean look at this volume as well around these levels um, so everything looks good for Tesla except the market and earnings you know earnings are coming 20th of July so you cannot really swing options on this one um, after 20th July because the uh, IV crush, right? So we just traded intraday, rinse and repeat every day. If it has momentum, we trade it. If market has momentum, we trade it. So yeah, uh, and also with the Elon not buying Twitter anymore, they, he doesn't have to sell Tesla shares. So this could uh, be taken as a positive news. Uh, I would love to kind of add Tesla around 725 because um, it's a bit bit extended but I mean Tesla right? Tesla can go for days here look at this once it broke out it just went went insane berserk so things can happen be cautious with this one um, trade it intraday if you're swinging swing risk only um, it, 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 it can go up and down major swings on this one right so next one amazon prime day is coming this week so this one is on watch as well uh seems like it's it had an inside day here so amazon looks decent i think 112 is possible that it tests that level and then if it holds this would be a good ad here at 112 for a long position um and 
you know flow is a little bit mixed all over the place so i'm gonna skip for tesla and amazon but yeah amazon looks decent as well for a long uh for a long position as long as market cooperates we did break above this trend line on amazon it's holding that level well but unable to break above it so we need a break above it and it shouldn't be a false break it needs to hold above this 116 level for for a bigger move to the upside and fill this gap potentially you right 141 um and then finally um another one i'm watching is end phase now end phase looks really good daily squeeze uh volume is a little bit less than i want it to be but still green nonetheless and end phase is approaching weekly supply area so a lot of people are bullish on end phase including me but this is something you need to be aware of weekly supply zones are nothing like daily ones or four hour these are strong supply zones these are institutional sellers um, around these areas so there needs to be a either consolidation or a massive breakout above this level for me to be bullish either way it's in my watch list i'll be watching above 222 to see if it can break above 222 and hold 230 and once it breaks 230 i mean you know 300 is possible with this but if it breaks below this this supply area it's setting up for a decent short play you know short swing here all the way down here but given how bullish the sector is tan looks really good as well so similarly tan is the sector here you can see it's starting to curl back up but tan needs to break above this wedge it's forming this wedge but third touch is usually something which you know will reject so it as long as it starts to base around 67.5 that's where we'll see like you see this base here it was forming that's something i would like to see here as well it starts to base here or some somewhere up here base and then break out but yeah sector looks decent as well um and uh sector is also approaching weekly supply area so again be cautious bullish but careful on this one it's extended and phase always pulls back on extensions you can see here it does move a lot but as long as it holds previous days gains it does continue to move up so that's what something you need to watch is is it holding the previous day gain so is it holding this 204 level as long as it's holding it great otherwise short and it's the same thing right you know if it's not holding this short um it didn't hold this level previous day short it didn't hold this previous day short so yeah but you know it did break out of this kind of like pennant here uh, this uh, this pennant so measured move should be roughly you know around this let's say from here to here is what 66 percent so from the base of this 66 percent would roughly be um you know somewhere around 300 dollars or something like that but uh that let's not jump the gun let's just wait for it to clear these resistance levels and finally is google now google looks really good um there's nothing much to talk about this splits coming soon I mean, as long as this level holds here, 2380, 2375, we are looking at all the way up to 2500 if market is showing strength. And Google is something which just keep on your watch list. Premiums are expensive. That's why a lot, a lot of people can afford it. But I just kept it because so those who can, can trade it. You can always buy shares and then sell covered calls. Anyway these are the setups i'm watching for the weekend for the week upcoming week very critical week for the market really really important to see what the cpi data says and uh, uh be careful i don't think it's a good idea to swing anything um unless like full size swing something small size or swing with profits or if the setup is cooperating unless just avoid it and uh, uh see you all tomorrow